Hello, I'm the Nastasha Greg. I remember it so you don't have to. And, oh man, we got a watch party with the worst movie of the past 20 years, Morbius. I gotta say, I'm especially excited to finally hear him say it's Morbin time. Let's take a look. One Morbius later. What the hell, man? He didn't say it at all! I don't know, man. I feel like the internet made that up. Oh, come on, Shazam. Why would the internet make up something like that? I don't know, man. I just got a feeling. No, no, no. We must have missed it. Are you down for watching it again? Who's ever said that about Morbius? Let's watch it again. Another Morbius later. Holy angry variation! It's not in the movie! Told you, man. The internet made it up. But why would the internet try to convince us of something like that? I don't know, Momo Challenge. Maybe it's how it gets its kicks. Maybe they get a laugh out of things they know don't exist, but try to convince people do exist. That's a good point, Gumbly. Please. Gumbly was my father's name. Call me Graggle. Oh, sorry, Graggle. Perhaps Morbius is so bad that it feels like a line that would be in it. That's true. I mean, literally, no other movie has been worse in decades. I mean, it blew up Canada. It ate a puppy pound. It brought back Mr. Rogers just to find something to cancel him over. Ooh, yeah, I didn't need to know that about him. Or maybe those things are made up too. Impossible. Next you'll be telling me Ugly Sonic wasn't in the multiverse of madness. No, maybe he's right. Maybe there's been so much buildup to what a failure the movie would be. That the internet had fun making up even more failures. I guess it's possible. <laughs> Morbius is one of the most enjoyable failures to come out in recent years. It was based on a lesser known Spider-Man villain, didn't have Spider-Man in it, starred everyone's least favorite geek media star, and was constantly pushed back due to the pandemic. Like this was gonna be the next Top Gun Maverick, like it had to be seen on the big screen. Not surprisingly, the film bombed pretty hard and was ripped apart by critics. But it also got something else going. The internet was fascinated, hell, still is fascinated with convincing people media that clearly doesn't exist, exists. A 90s geck show on Toon Disney where he swears, Why am I in the mood to mercilessly beat an LA motorist? A missing Simpson character named Graggle, Walter White in the Multiverse of Madness, and yes, Morbius saying, it's Morbid time. It's Morbid time. Even Jared Leto, in a brief self-allowance of humor, made a joke about reading a script from Morbius 2, It's Morbin Time. Sony completely misread this meme, thinking it would translate into gold and re-release Morbius again on the big screen, making it one of the rare films to bomb twice. It was a perfect ending for a perfect failure. But what maybe makes it even stranger is... I actually think this movie's kinda okay. Oh, oh my no. god! Wait, have you no shame! It's What's wrong now. with you? Unreal! You right Unbelievable! Oh, Unbelievable as me! Yeah, I'm gonna be that guy. So, okay, I haven't lost my mind. It's clear what's wrong with this film. But I actually found myself getting into it enough that I did want to know what was gonna happen in the end. Maybe the bar was set so low. Maybe I was expecting so much worse. Maybe I'm a sucker for tormented monster movies and appreciate this actually gave me a tormented monster movie instead of lying with a buddy buddy 90s comedy. But that's it, there's still lots of laughs that can be had and plenty of stupid things to point out. So I'm gonna mock them like everybody does, but also stick up for it a little bit. A little, a little bit. Because let's face it, who else is going to? I think we know who the real monster is. As my uncle comic book Graggle said, worst episode ever. 90 cell phone. Let's take a look at the internet's favorite failure. Cute. This is Morbius. The film opens with Dr. Morbius, played by Internet Punchline for at least two more years, Jared Leto, traveling to Costa Rica to get his hands on some bats. Yeah, how much you want that? He used those crutches offset. I hear he also sucked Michael Keaton's blood so he could be a literal lame Batman. We get to attack Jared Leto? Hell yeah, we're down for that! I'm just gonna make an assumption and say this is followed by a Yeah, this felt like a sometime earlier movie. Okay, to the film's credit, this isn't like a two weeks earlier thing. It actually goes back to when he was a child growing up in a hospital with a rare blood disease. Hello, Milo. My name's Lucian. The person who was here before was Milo. He was also the new Milo. I don't even remember the first Milo. Yeah, you totally joined a cult. Everybody here is named Milo. But don't worry, some of the people that left here discovered Atlantis, laws, and overlooked animal cruelty. Jesus, that's a waterfall! Like the original Spartans. We are the few, 
against the many. Well, I really like these child actors and I believe their friendship. These bullies are so impressively one note, even Stephen King would demand a rewrite for them. <laughs> Look at the freaks! Ho <laughs> <laughs> ho They're dying! Ho ho ho! Come on guys, here we can get some chuckles at the Anne Frank Museum. Ho ho ho! Nurse! Milo's machine starts to crash, but thankfully Morb Giver here is on the case and fixes it with a pen. Again, your run-of-the-mill bad movie would just ignore how impossibly amazing that is, but his doctor does say, holy shit, how impossibly amazing that is. You fixed it with a ballpoint pen. There's a school for gifted children in New York. It's called Xavier's School for Preteen Pretentiousness. While Michael is sent off, he writes to Milo, who's left behind. But oh no, the bully's got his... Hilarious letters? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> he says he misses him and every day is physical pain. We should totally show this to the bully factory we came out of. Oh boy, this will be just like the time we beat up that old lady with her own wheelchair. Get away! Come on, guys, we can punch ourselves for a few hours. <laughs> Years pass and Michael becomes a breakthrough scientist, creating artificial blood, but still hasn't found a cure for him and Milo. Play now by Matt Smith. We both know I have issues, but hey, I kept the program. You know, does dressing up like the mad doctor really put kids' minds at ease with your bedside manner? He's assisted by Dr. Bancroft, played by Adria Arjana, who discovers that a lot of his breakthroughs are coming from the OG bloodsuckers themselves. Some friends I brought back from Costa Rica. Ah, oh, dinner's ready. The fusion of different species is a legacy we already carry. We have to push the boundaries, take the risks. Invest in Bitcoin. He tries it out on lab rats, which at first doesn't seem to work, but after a little bit of time, does. Though their personalities do seem a little different. It worked. It must be inordinately taxing to be such a boob. We have to induce a coma before she has a stroke. But the same can't be said for the child he was working on. Or... Maybe Ken, I don't know. She never shows up in the movie again. <laughs> yeah, we should probably talk about the choppy editing that clearly cut a lot from this. On the one hand, it sticks out like, well, another Jerry Leto comic book flick, with audio clearly being re recorded when someone's mouth is off screen. Does our generous benefactor Milo know what you're actually doing here? To save my best friend Milo and everyone else like us. With that said, it does only show what needs to be shown, focuses only on plot points and emotional moments, and results in a refreshingly short runtime. Again, unlike other Chopped Up Leto projects. I'll also say the thing you're not supposed to say. Jared Leto is one of the reasons this film works. What's happening? Okay. Three days later. So after returning from the hospital, I'm confirmed to be fine and do stand by. Jared Leto is one of the reasons this movie works. Now you're talking to a guy whose favorite performance of his is him getting the shit beaten out of him in Fight Club. Mainly because I just like seeing him get the shit beaten out of him in Fight Club. I have yet to see a performance of his that I like, and I do like this one. He treats everything first like a scientist. He's also a good friend, an awkward joker, okay that one writes itself, and yes, a tortured soul that could easily become pretentious, but he is a scientist first and his reactions to everything you can tell is trying to put his emotions second and his research first because quite frankly he has to. This could be our last chance, so what do you say? We go out with a fight? His performance is restrained, but he isn't a robot either. He has reactions that are both legit serious and comical. Coffee? <sighs> ah, not that kind of vampire. That, and I truly buy his friendship with Milo, who he also sees as his responsibility. Is it dangerous? Should I be worried? You want me to lie to you? That would be nice, yes. It's a walk on the park on a sunny day. Oh, yeah, that day. Even with this terrible writing with the most generic, overused dialogue. I should have died years ago. I don't want to see you get hurt. There would be a cure. At what cost? Seriously, these are 8-bit Castlevania game lines. He sells it because he seems like he really cares. It's not a great performance, but it's a good one. And considering his past, that is more than enough for me. Listen, if you start quoting the notebook to me, I am going to stop and hobble very slowly in the opposite direction. Oh, this is the part where the bullies still wear the red vests or grown up and still beat the shit out of them? Tell me they've done anything else with their lives! With Milo's money, he's going to international waters to perform his illegal experiment on himself, as he feels it's his last resort. Hey, wait, guys. I don't think they brought us out to international waters just so we could gamble. Shouldn't be down here. I can be wherever I want, nurse. It's a doctor. 
actually. You're still the help, just like me. Yeah, we have one minute to make you unlikable to justify Morbius killing you, so hurry it up. What the hell? Everybody down to the lab now. What did that? Is his code a walkie-talkie? What the hell do you say that into? What, they got the traditional big bulky ones, yet he has some sort of unseen microphone in his collar? What did that? No, no, you're supposed to say into your button fly. That's where your walkie-talkie is. Stop. Put that gun down. <gasps> oh, they pushed her. I guess they're ethically okay to kill too. We can still reform. <laughs> Back and forth on the effect. Hear me out on this one. It's revealed later that he has sonar, and he has a very unique way of experiencing it. Honestly, I think the way they show this is kind of inventive, and it doesn't need to look real because it's kind of an abstract concept. But then it starts showing up on surveillance cameras, so it isn't just how he perceives it. And if that's the case, what the hell is this stuff supposed to be then? Did someone throw turpentine on the CG effects and now we're watching an inkling melt? Quick, to the dark, loud, steamy part of the ship. Nothing will happen to us there. Oh no, this guy wasn't even PG-13 to death. He was PG-13 sound affected to death. As you put together, the action scenes are very 2010s, but again, if Venom can be praised for its brilliant 90s cliches, I don't see why this can't get the same pass. At least they're not long, and they get back to the story pretty quick. Oh shit, I was supposed to have a six pack, but somehow it gave me a butt crack. Mayday, mayday, mayday. Request immediate airlift. His transformation to slightly tolerable Russell Brand is nearly complete as he calls for help to save Bancroft and jumps off the ship. You know, vampires are famous for their super swimming. The FBI arrive, and I love the look on Agent Tyrese's face here when he puts together what his role is. Eight bodies running IDs right now, but apparently they all shop at the same mercenary supply store. He's like, ah oh, shit, I'm the straight guy to the annoying comic relief, aren't I? Al Madrigal plays nasally flattened Jeff Goldblum here, and again, to the editor's credit, he wants him just as quickly off screen as we do. So, what hunts at night drinks human blood? Early this morning, an unmanned car... There, he's gone. You only have to put up with him once in a while. He's the flu shot of the film. This is probably my favorite stuff in the movie. He experiments on his new abilities like a scientist would, documenting it, but also trying to push himself to his limits. I love stuff like this in monster films, especially mad scientist movies, and I legit love his fascination, fear, but also excitement over it. I have the constitution of an Olympic athlete, increased strength and speed that can only be described as superhuman. Maybe I can make this haircut work without uproarious laughter. Nope, can't perform miracles. I feel a kinship with these creatures. They, they welcome me. No, they're just thinking, ah, don't suck his blood or you'll get all methody. Yeah, you don't want to be a meth head. He locks himself away to see how long he can go without drinking his artificial blood when Milo discovers him and he's brought up to date. I made a terrible mistake, Milo. We won't make mistakes, don't worry about it. I right, never made one like this before. I know, we both said yes to Morbius, but we can move on! I mean, I can move on! He can't hand over the power to save Milo because it's too dangerous and he craves real blood too much. What, so, so, so you get to live and I get to die, is that it? I need you to go. No, please, Michael, don't. I said you out! I've only seen you like this after you watch a YouTuber review Suicide Squad. Later that night at a hospital, one of the nurses is attacked and... Oh, I guess the most power-saving hospital there is. Yeah, I don't know what's up with these lights. <laughs> It's paying the hospital bill. Am I right? Am I right? I deserve this one. I'm not even a doctor. finds out about the nurse's death and thinks he's to blame. Not just him, but also the Gravity Falls cops here. You've been looking for a cure for your condition your whole life. Crazy experiments, maybe on a boat? Crazy isn't a term that I would use. And it's not a boat I have, it's a ship! Oh, goddammit. <laughs> we get a variety of good effects and bad effects covering up probably worse effects, but again, these scenes really don't last that long. Enough. Okay, cut to the detention complex. 
Holy water? What? I'm not taking any chances. <laughs> That's that guy. Eight dead mercs on a boat really doesn't ruffle our feathers. I'm pretty sure they were guilty of something and happy to have them off the water. Again, justifying the Spider-Man villain as totally not a villain for some reason. God, I love this trend. Though I don't know, are we in the Spider-Man universe or the Hulk universe at this point? I'm starting to get hungry. You don't want to see me when I'm hungry. Grab a Sinister Sixters. Has to do with Spider-Man, I think. Again, though, we get to the good stuff when Milo visits and reveals something surprising. He's Kris Kringle and Kaiser Sose! Never tell it. I'm really glad they didn't take forever to reveal it was him that took the serum and killed the nurse, as many other films would definitely drag that out despite how obvious it was. And again, the best scenes really are between the two of them. <laughs> oh, we heard a thud! Guess that calls for assault rifles! Always figured that guy for a freak. Oh yeah? How's that? You've never met <laughs> It's funny, because Jared Leto becomes so restrained in this movie, he seemingly hands over his hamminess to Matt Smith, who goes over the top in the best way. You have to stop denying who you are. It's boring. We can go anywhere. We can do anything. Let's go. Let's have some fun. He ironically becomes the scenery chewer, but I don't mean that as an insult. It legit looks like he's having a great time, and thus, we are too. Even though! The key to remember whiskey to forget. Michael! 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 Here was I thinking you were a complete asshole. Woo! He's like Anthony Michael Hall trying to act black in weird science. He's so fascinatingly out of touch, how can you not love the hell out of it? I am the resurrection. Also, this is one of the few action scenes that's legit pretty fun to watch. <laughs> the most realistic part of the movie, New Yorker's not giving a shit. I will use my Marvel vs. Capcom effects on you! Michael leads him and tries to meet up with Bancroft in secret. Hey, stranger. Around this here bus they call him Strider. She believes him and decides to help him out, but they need a lab. Which he conveniently stumbles across and conveniently snatches some blood on his way to it. Yeah, did I mention yet the script is the worst part of the movie? I am gonna need your laboratory. Are you trying to be funny? No, 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 absolutely not. I'm Jared Leto, I don't know how to be funny. Who the hell are you, Matt? I don't know. Oh! oh, should you be coming out at a pride party then? Yeah, why do these get a pass again? Whoa, Doctor Who Dad. Hello, Duke of Hayenburg. Milo tries stealing girlfriends at a local club, which pisses off quite a few boyfriends. But he naturally gets revenge later that night. It's Milo time. Okay, considering this character, I wouldn't be shocked if he said that. After a pretty cool scene where Bancroft tries to slow down her heartbeat to show Milo she's not lying. Just to be sure, I'm going to ask you one more time. You don't happen to know where he is? I don't. Okay, to be fair, my heart would be beating fast if Matt Smith was just randomly acting this weird around me. He's visited by the doctor who raised him in the hospital. There will be no more violence, <laughs> understand? And yeah, okay, it isn't quite Fallen Kingdom call the police on yourself, but exactly what you would think happens, happens. <laughs> when your effects get so bad, Matt Smith's original face looks a lot more scary. It looks so cartoony, I keep expecting a cartoon scream to fly out of there. Milo visits Bancroft again, attempts to kill her, and I will say this is kind of where the movie legit starts to blow. It's not the worst, but you can tell everyone just wants to get the film over with. There is literally just 10 minutes left for the conflict, climax, and resolution, and it goes by like five. It's a little weird. First off, this is Leto and Arjana's only bad acting. She is dying, and neither of them seem to give a shit about it. Dear. Make it mean something. I'm sorry. Oh, hold on, I'm phoning a DoorDash while I'm also phoning this part too. He fights Milo in, you guessed it, some pretty piss poor effects. Drank the red! Good for you! Is your face becoming one of those drawings where it's upside down but right side up at the same time? They do enough action pauses to make Zack Snyder say slow down. I mean, 
don't slow down. You know what I mean. Their suits are so untorn, I'm wondering if they're vampires too. Hey, coats can also be walkie-talkies in this world. And out of nowhere, he summons all these bats. Does Batman Begins have a lawsuit ready? It's just so many questions. <laughs> he defeats Milo, Bancroft comes back to life after being bitten, and no joke, that's where it ends. Or rather, stops. It's comical how quickly this film wraps up. And even that, it doesn't do very well because we have an after credit sequence that is so terrible, it might be my favorite of all time. Michael Keaton as the Vulture appears from another universe, you know, the one where he says hi to Morbius in the trailer, and is released because, well, nobody knows who the hell he is or where he came from. Now, keep in mind, this film did get pushed back because the pandemic and Spider-Man No Way Home came out first, even though this was supposed to come out before. So a little choppiness is expected here. But oh my god, you have no idea! It shows Morbius driving to the middle of nowhere, clearly meant for a different scene in the movie, when CG Vulture appears with a laughably dubbed Keaton voiceover. Leto's reactions so don't match what Keaton is saying, it is one of the most magical moments in cinematic history. I've been reading about you. I'm listening. Who the hell would say that when Green Goblin's parrot approaches you? I'm not sure how I got here. Has to do with Spider-Man, I think. A bunch of guys like us should team up and do some good. Intriguing. <laughs> hey, Morbius, what are your thoughts on this? Intriguing. What are your thoughts on this? Intriguing. What are your thoughts on my hand going up your dead grandma's ass and using her as a puppet? Intriguing. He said intriguing, guys! He's totally reacting to what I just said! Okay, so I think the last few minutes are more what people were expecting this film to be. Laughably bad and forced. For me though, I can't lie about my thoughts. I truly found there to be more good in this than bad. I like Leto's performance, I like Smith's performance. They're both entertaining for different reasons, and it's kind of a role reversal for these two actors. I like their friendship turned rivalry, I like the struggle they had, I like their unique way of showing Sonar when they actually kept it just Sonar. I enjoy the monster slash mad scientist angle of the film, I love when he's experimenting with his abilities. While it's nothing spectacular by any means, if the film was to be stopped halfway through, I would seek it out and finish it to find out what happens to the main leads. With that said, yes, it's phenomenally easy to see why anyone would not like this film. It's poorly written, it's noticeably chopped up, and it's an idea that clearly exists just to give Sony a third attempt at a Sinister Six movie. But like I said, I think this is for me what Venom is for a lot of other people. The bad moments just don't overshadow the good for me. It's only in the last 10 minutes that it gets horribly bad, and even then, I was having a good time with just how bad it was. I guess even the people who saw it didn't think it was quite as horrible as it was built up to be, but then again, it wasn't that many people who saw it. <laughs> what I do know is, this movie clearly pushes the right buttons to piss some people off, but it didn't do it for me. Yes, there's a lot to mock, but there's a lot to legitimately enjoy too. For me, it's an okay film. And honestly, that's ten times more than what I was expecting. By no means the best, but by no means the worst either. Also, movie, you didn't have to make up a fake scene at the end lying to us about what was really going on. That's what the internet's for. Critic, look! Jared Leto in our building! Oh my god, you're right! I love another Jared Leto clearly in our building! By Joe, you're correct! Hi, caramba! Another Jared Leto! Holy smokes! <gasps> and another! <gasps> and another! <gasps> and another! Hey, I think a bunch of guys like us should team up! Yes! To do some good! Well, obviously. What do you think, Morbius? Intriguing. Intriguing indeed! I am the resurrection.